Bad lighting. Hey, Lucy. Hello, Catherine McGill. Hi. Oh, great. Yes, you're a chair. Fantastic. Um, Catherine, can I? I'm trying to enter the meeting passcode on like the, the Zoom room control, but I can't figure out how to click the numbers. They're very small above the letters on the key. Oh, 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 got it. Thank you. Thanks for your help. <laughs> Catherine, you're muted. <laughs> I have screwed up a bunch of meetings. Uh, oh yeah, yeah. This is my first time using trying to use this equipment. I was feeling a little nervous before the meeting, but I think if I can get this equipment going, I'm going to feel accomplished. No problem. <laughs> well, hey, you've got three people, so you've got a meeting. So you've succeeded. <laughs> Great. Hey, Andy. I'm so happy to see you, Lucy Neely. Yeah. So, yeah, we're committee members are to sit by a microphone. Whoa. Adnan is, can you, you can hear us, but there's an echo, huh? Uh, I don't think there's an echo now. Okay. Great. Oh, there I am. Or actually there is slightly, one of the things that you may have to do is uh, if you click on the- um, I turned on the, the volume down on the laptop in the room. Did that make the slight echo go away? If you click on uh, the little mute button and click leave computer audio on that laptop, then wow. that will completely eliminate the echo. Okay, I muted it. Hello, Kim. Now we will do leave computer audio. Perfect, yes, exactly. Now the microphone just disappears from your um, thing. Cool, yeah. okay, so the slight echo is gone. Yeah. You're well prepared for meeting in this cold <laughs> room. I'm so like, did I wear a warm enough jacket? Because I remember what it's like. Yeah, I just turned the heat on right when I got in. So yeah. I've been in a meeting in here at night in a while, but I remember yeah, they were when cold. Do you, when do you think the last, oh, I see. Do you think the last meeting you were here was? With Andy over there. It was with Andy over there. It was nature and science. I think, <laughs> I don't think there's any amplification. There's no speakers in the room. So, yeah, maybe just sit like. Um, right next to this so that it doesn't block. I will do my best. Can you hear me, Andy? Can you hear me? Yep, Corn. Both on the main board. Hey, Cole. I think technically we don't have quorum yet. We need five. Well, actually, we do have five. We do? Oh, yes. Excellent. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Great. 
Okay, I'm just pulling up the agenda. Sorry, I had to figure out all the logistics and yeah. stuff. Kirsten, I apologize if this is an annoying question, but I just am like doubting myself and don't want to get it wrong. Is it Kirsten or Kristen? Kirsten. 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 Yep. Rhymes with curse. <laughs> or hearse for another <laughs> cheerful word. <laughs> okay. So we do have a quorum. Um, may we begin this meeting of the Portola Valley Race and Equity Committee. Um, we have a council liaison who's Mary Huffley, but I don't see her in the physical or Zoom room. And person, you're gonna you're our secretary, yes? Yes, I am. Most excellent. Cool. Um, okay, roll call. You all would humor me while we do roll call. Um, if you could just say whether you're present or not, and then share one thing you're able to feel grateful for in this moment. I'm Lucy Neely, and I can feel grateful right now to be meeting with you all. It's been a long time, and it's nice to be together. Uh, Andrew Pierce. Present, and I'm grateful for good health. Uh, Tim Maranucci. Marnucci present. Um, yeah, I'm grateful that we're meeting in person. First time in how many years? Well, the committee's been like 20 months and we haven't met in person. Mm -hmm. So yeah, right. This is our first in-person meeting. Uh, Kirsten Kingdon. Present. And uh, I'm grateful that my knees are healthy enough to, re to carry me on hikes even though they complain. Excellent. Um, Adnan, and Adnan, can you pronounce your last name for me? I realize I've never heard you pronounce it. Uh, Adnan Iftikhar. Got it. And I'm present and uh, I'm grateful to be in, uh, able to join from, uh, from afar uh, so that I can put the kids to bed and have some time with them this evening. Mm -hmm. Yeah, hybrid. And Cole Kawaja, can you also? Yeah, that's me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, excuse me. I'm a little bit sick. Uh, yeah, that Kawaja is right. I'm present and I'm grateful that the weather's like getting better. It's like it's getting warmer. It's nice. Nice. Okay. And so that means we're not here as Judy Murphy, um, Pat Bainan. And Jonathan Clark. Meet new council liaison. Our new council liaison is Mary Hotty, but she is not here. So just leave it at that, unless anybody has any questions or. Okay. Great, we're cruising. We're, we I thought this agenda was preposterous when I put it forward with like nine agenda items, but maybe we'll get close. Um, so then, oh, I'm so sorry. I I missed approval of minutes. Is that oral communication? Yeah, and and oral communications. Okay, thanks, Kim, holding it down as a previous chair. Okay, so agenda item number two: oral communications for items not on the agenda. Actually, uh, we do have one, so glad we're going back. Does anyone else have a um, oral communication not on the agenda? Um, okay, well, the one that I am aware of is that we have Andy Brown with us um, tonight, and Andy has applied to be on the Race and Equity Committee, and um, I consider it my mistake for not having that on the agenda tonight. Um, and I just recently received Andy's application, but I think you actually made it a couple months ago. Um, that's something, okay. 
Does this amplify it at all? That makes it louder. Okay, yeah. great. I didn't realize that. Um, I was just saying, Andy, for oral communications that, um, okay. <laughs> no problem. I was just saying, Andy, that you've applied to be on the committee. That you've applied to be on the committee? Yes. yes. So this could be um, the time when you could tell us about yourself and you could tell us about your interest on the committee. Um, I think that there is something I need to do on that Zoom room to make that happen. Unless, Andy, can you speak into uh, one of these microphones and tell us, yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, if you could just tell us about your interest in this, in this committee. Well, and if you could try and keep it to two minutes, technically. Okay. Uh, my family has been interested in this, in race relationships since before the Revolutionary War, where some ancestor uh, set his slave uh, free in upstate New York. A lot of people don't realize that slavery was legal all over the, you know, all over the colonies. Uh, and uh, 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 I um, joined the NAACP in 1943 before I would, was able to drive. Uh, had to be driven up to San Francisco to the Unitarian Church. I, and I joined the, in, the um, ACLU the same day. Um, and, and I've been involved in various ways with more or less incidentally with black people sort of being the one that would speak to them if I felt like they were ignored and, and, uh, and of course, since, uh, the George Floyd business, why I've stood out on the corner of um, um, Alpine and Portola Road for an hour, every almost every Sunday with my sign. And what I'm trying to do, uh, well, I'm trying to do two things. One, I'm I'm simply trying to make people aware that this is something they might consider. Now, most of the people who go by seem to agree with me. Uh, they may honk or they smile and, or wave like this. And so I, that, that's, I take to be agreement. And some don't. And occasionally I get the finger, very rarely, but I have. And however, that person doesn't realize that the only reason he gives me the finger is because he has read my sign and he is aware of it and he doesn't like it. So in other words, I've succeeded even with him because anyway. anyway. Andy, um, I don't mean to be rude, but we're supposed to limit um, this portion of the agenda what? to two minutes. So could you just, uh, I, I totally see how the sign experience is totally relevant, but could you bring it back to um, your particular interest in being on this committee? Yeah, or and I, speak do, to I that. don't know whether yeah. I can contribute anything to the committee. Uh, and just t tonight, I can see that participating on the committee would be very difficult because of my ears. Hmm. In other words, I, I'm sort of kidding myself about being able to hear what other people say and then be able to make a meaningful comment about it. Hmm. Well, at any rate, whatever <laughs> you guys decide, expect me on the corner on yeah. Sunday morning. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Well, um, 
thank you for your application, Andy. And I'm sorry that I didn't have it on the agenda oh, officially because committee members aren't supposed to um, ask questions or comments on the uh, oral communications portion. But I I do understand what you're saying about the the hearing as um, a reality and participating in the yeah. in the committee. So um, maybe you could just spend this meeting and we'll all do our best to really speak into the microphone but then um there's also uh people on on the zoom camera so i don't know if i i don't know if there's a way to turn up our volume in here um but so just use this meeting as a way to to gauge whether you think that would be realistic and then we're we don't actually make the decision the town council makes the decision no. um i think we could you know make a recommendation but we can't we don't make the decision so um i i would say let's let's check in again after this meeting just to even see how the the feasibility from a communication standpoint is yeah at any rate whatever is decided yeah would you please uh, notify me when you're going to have meetings on, I can do it that way. Yes. Our next meeting is Tuesday, March 14th at, uh, 6 30 PM. We're always the second Tuesday of the month. Yeah. Tuesdays. Yeah. Yep. Second, yeah. second I Tuesday. I won't be able to make that. I'm going to be in Death Valley. Okay. For, um, for birthday. Okay. Well, I, you said you weren't, weren't sure if you would contribute, and I'm sure, I'm absolutely sure you would have something to contribute. Um, but let's, like I said, let's check in, you and I at least, after this meeting um, to talk some more and to, especially about volume and, yeah. and other things. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Andy. Yeah. So glad to, I'm glad to see uh, uh, seven people involved. Yeah. In this. That's part of my uh, push. Yeah. To get people to realize it's their business, not someone else's business. Yes. Thank you for your service in that way. Um, I think if you need to make public comment, um, it would be it would make sense to come back to the microphone. But Andy, are can you, do you prefer Andy or Andrew? Well, if he's in the room, he's Andy. <laughs> okay, I was so on a committee with him for, for four years or five years. So that's how we kept it separate. Yes. You can call me Andrew. Okay, that sounds good. Andrew, are you able to see the Zoom panel uh, with and Andy sitting there? Maybe it would be more or less, yeah. I think I think I can't see Cole, but other than yeah, I think it'd be best maybe to go back to that spot right there. And then if you want to make a public comment, come back to this microphone. Thank you, Andy. Okay. Excellent. Thank you. Yeah. Um, do we have a do we have time for comment? We're, this is oral communication, okay. so I don't think we're supposed to make comments on this portion of the agenda. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll check in with Andy afterwards, and maybe this is something we'll end up on our agenda next time officially, in which case we will be able to make comment and ask questions. Yeah. I just wanted to just say that accessibility is part of the, yeah. the work that needs to happen. So yes, just wanted to just mention that, that everyone should be able to participate in every way that they can. That's it. Yeah. And um, it is true, Andy, that maybe if you were participating via Zoom, that you would be able to hear better. Maybe, I think, I think so. Yeah, thank you, Adnan, for saying that. Um, so we're not actually in a portion of the agenda where our council liaison, Mary Hufty, has arrived. Do you have uh, insight on the accessibility issue? Okay. Great. Progress, not perfection. Thank you. Um, okay, approval of minutes. So actually, since we're at oral, I'm gonna stick on oral communications for a minute. I just wanna say that, um, like I said, I was grateful to be meeting again and just to acknowledge that it's been a little while since we've met. 
three months out of a 12 month cycle is, uh, is a, a strong break. And um, so I, I remember that looking back at where we're going over minutes from November. So um, yeah, just wanna welcome us back into this space. And I hope everyone has, um, you know, that the space can be useful to us in terms of engaging now uh, with this committee and this work. And, um, and maybe people have had time uh, during these three months to, to reflect on the committee and how they wanna be a part of the committee, um, what kind of work we wanna do here, which is uh, we'll be talking about together as well. So approval of minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look at the minutes? Yes. Does anyone have questions, comments, uh, amendments to the minutes? I'll give people uh, just a moment to look them over. Just a point of clarification. Uh, mm -hmm. There are times that um, folks are mentioned by their full name and sometimes they're only mentioned by their last name. Is there a reason for that? I think that's just my own inconsistency as uh, performing my secretary duties. I do remember in a in an early meeting, Judy Murphy indicated the preference for last names. Is I don't know if that's an official. Anybody know whether that's like a legal requirement? Anyways, it's it's standard. So I think we can just stick with that. So um, Kirsten probably already is savvy to this, but we'll just do last names. Julie noted. Okay, excellent. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Just texting a couple committee members to see if they'll be joining. Okay, any other comments on the November 8th minutes? And if not, uh, somebody could make a motion to approve them. Could Don't make. Move. I second. Okay, I think even for minutes, we have to do a roll call vote. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure, yeah, with the Zoom format. Okay. Yeah. Um, Andrew. I'll vote, I'll vote yes, even though I wasn't here. They looked good to me. <laughs> okay, yeah. Um, Adnan? Yes. Cole? Yes. Yeah. I, I, uh, committee member, well, hold on, we'll get to that. Uh, Kirsten. Yes. Kim. Yes. Okay, and I vote yes. Minutes are passed as is. Um, Kim was pointing out that Cole is now um, in the role switching from committee member to student liaison. So technically, Cole, you are not a voting member of the committee anymore, more of an advisory uh, member, I suppose it would make sense for me to um, not uh, ask for your vote unless anybody has a different idea. Like, does anyone think it would make sense to still include Cole in a roll call vote? Or would that just be confusing? To me, it's pretty clear that he's not, uh, like we don't, um, he doesn't count in quorum. Mm -hmm. Um, but he's on the committee in a special role. And so he has, I think, around issues from a student perspective. That's how, you know, we're, I guess we're informally, although it is a formal role, but not, a, not a, all the other uh, roles of a, as a committee. Yeah. I, I think to me, that's pretty clear. Yeah, I, I think that I don't know what the terms are of the student liaison, but there is a specific category of having voice, but not vote. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know if that's the category that applies to student liaison, because I haven't seen anything in writing about it. Yeah, I haven't either. Andrew or Adnan, any? I would assume he would not vote if he's not a member. Yeah, okay. So 
Um, so Cole, I, from now on, if we're doing a vote, I'm not going to call your name, but as, um, Kim, you know, described, uh, you are in the role in this committee to give us your perspective, um, especially as a younger person, as, um, a student. So I would just encourage you, um, to share that perspective during discussion and comment time. Um, cause that's when we could hear you as opposed to a vote. Yeah, for sure. That makes sense. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for sticking with us. Okay. For new and business. I, uh, sorry. Yes. Can, can you see my hand? Oh, barely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Does that work? Yes. Or I, okay. It, just, just wanted to, I, um, I will look now. I wasn't, I wasn't looking and it happens to be under the record symbol also. So, oh, interesting. Okay. <laughs> but did you want right. to say something? Yes. Uh, yeah. So I was going to say that it might be a good idea potentially to uh, write something formally about what a student liaison's role is and mm -hmm. potentially present that to the council as a, um, as a recommendation to have in, uh, in other committees as well. Um, and I'm happy to take that on. Thank you, Adnan. Um, council member Hufty, do you know, is there definition around the role of student liaison or is this a I think this is a, yeah, I think, I think Cole could be the first student liaison. Was this something? I don't think so. No? I, we, okay. Yeah, it was suggested as a role that has, that committees have had before. Um, yeah. Council member Hufty, do you think there would be value in defining this role as Don suggested? Sure. Okay. Cool. Adnan, yeah, if you would um, want to take that on, that, that clarification, that would be great. Sure. And um, if you don't mind just repeating what Council Member Hafti is saying, I just can't hear them. Uh, yes. Um, do you want to sit at the, the dais here. with us? Is this called, I think it's called the dais? Yes. Yep. I, think you're, I think you're supposed to actually. <clears throat> okay. Thanks, Thank Adnan. You. Yeah. So all I said is, yes, it, we have. We've had a couple of people apply since I've been uh, there. Um, and I'm not sure what we have written down. And so I just thought the first thing to do would be to find out what we've got and, and that it might be a good place for this committee, the diverse, diversity and in, in inclusion. Uh, to uh, to formalize it. There's always room for improvement. Excellent. Great. So I, I so so will will you will you follow up with me in terms of if there is something written and then we can elaborate from there? I'll do my best. Thank you so much. Um, I can or Council Member Hufty's uh, your email is available. On the town website, yep. if yep. Adon wants and to I'm find it. I'm also meeting with Jeremy tomorrow morning, so I, you can, I can easily do that. Okay. And committee member Judith Murphy has joined us. So I just want to say welcome. Thank you, Judith. Yep, sorry, I'm late. I somehow thought it was seven, and I was planning on being there in person, but I had a fall and I can't get out. So I'm here by Zoom, but I think I can't uh, be there as a member. I think I have to be here just as a participant because of the Brown Act stuff about notification about where I am. There's a quorum at the dais. We can uh, allow you to be for illness. Yeah, and, and Judith, uh, um, I don't know all the details, but the timing actually changed for when people need to be in person. It was extended. So we're, we're still within a window where people can meet virtually actually without providing their addresses. There was some back and oh, Okay. Yeah. Then I'm real. I can be here real. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a real voting member. <laughs> but I'm very sorry to hear you had a fall and thanks for, thanks for joining us. Hope thanks. you mend up. I will. Okay, uh, new business. A is meet new council liaison. Um, we had two wonderful council liaisons Wait, for- did we vote on the minutes? We did. Okay. 
You're right. Yes. Um, we had two wonderful council liaisons for uh, the, the time that we've existed as a committee, John Richards and Marianne Derwin, uh, who were, who were uh, very influential in, in starting this committee. Um, and now they are both not on the council. So we have a new um, council liaison, who is a, a new town council member, and that is Mary Hufty. And um, Mary, I'm gonna open it up to you if there's anything you wanna share with us, and then we'll open it up to committee members if there's anything they wanna ask you. Great, no, I'm very much looking forward to uh, seeing how, business, how we can run our business better. And, and uh, making sure we're being as inclusive as we can. So I think this, the work of this committee is very important. Uh, and I welcome any input. Great, thank you for serving on the council and being our liaison. Um, any questions or anything from committee members? I just wanna say welcome. And glad you are <laughs> glad you are a person, and we know you have a lot of background in um, connections with the uh, indigenous people, and that's a real that brings a real value to us. I'm I'm also quite trained in inclusion and diversity, and from uh, both work and where they make you they do required courses regularly, and also in my volunteer work. I've been through several courses, so hopefully I can add some value. But mostly I'm just here to listen and do nothing. Right. Um, well, we hope that you will share some of your wisdom with us <laughs> when it's appropriate. <laughs> well, All right. Welcome. Anything else from committee members? I suppose as an agenda item, I should ask if there's any public comment. No, great. Okay, we'll move on to um, 4B. And I just want to uh, say that, you know, we missed our meeting in January because of the power outage. And then it was um, hard with quorum to try and schedule a, a meeting between then and now. Um, and really, I was thinking that to start out this new year, especially after the break we've had, we would wanna, um, revisit our subcommittee rosters and think about what our priorities are and the work that we want to be doing in this year and how we organize ourselves to do that. Um, and then there was another issue that um, gained a lot of energy in town, which was um, conversation around the, the land acknowledgement, which um, was of discussion at our last meeting as a committee in November. Um, when it had recently been approved by the town council. Um, and so I put this as um, an agenda item before our sort of um, reviewing our, our priorities in our organization, our subcommittees, because it felt like it was, it's been quite alive and was wanting attention now. And I don't, I don't think there's like a lot of members of the public that are here to comment on it relative to um, some of the dis discussion energy that there has been in town around it. But I think, I think maybe there's one uh, member of the public. And also I think it'll just be really good for us as a committee to um, discuss this item. So, um, it's something that I've been talking about and thinking about a lot the last month. So I'm trying to, I didn't like write anything in preparation, which I sort of wish I had. Um, so I think I'll just share some, some background and try and not be too lengthy. And if, if I'm going on too much, somebody just like give me a symbol and I'll, I'll try and, or like a wink or something and I'll try and, uh, be more succinct. So, um, Kim Aranucci, uh, did the valuable act of, I would say, driving the um, land acknowledgement um, process in the year of 2020. And that resulted um, in it going to the town council where it was approved, the language as is. And as a committee, um, let 
as a as a committee in our entirety, but led in the process by Kim, um, we had requested to the town council that the uh, land acknowledgement be read at all committee, commission, and council meetings. Um, and what the town council decided in October of 2022 was that they approved the um, the land acknowledgement as we had revised it because another piece is that there was a land acknowledgement that had been created by a, a, an intern for Portola Valley several years ago. So the land acknowledgement we created was a bit revision based on that. So they both, they both approved the new language and, um, and decided instead of it being read at the beginning of every meeting that they would include it on the town letterhead being the town agendas for committees and I believe commissions and council. And I think also somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but the uh, intention is to, I don't, I haven't seen it yet, but to put it on the town website. Has anyone seen it on the town website? No. And, um, and then also I think there was talk of a plaque in the schoolhouse, which is uh, something that we can check in on how that's going. Um, so in 2023, when the land acknowledgement appeared at the bottom of committee agendas, um, there were varying reactions amongst members of the community. I think mostly committee members who were seeing it on their agenda, um, some chairs and yeah, like I said, there was mixed reaction, but certainly some of it was um, concern or uh, resistance um, to the presence of this land acknowledgement, especially on agendas. Um, and if anybody wants to reference it, it is at the bottom of our agenda, which we didn't read. Kim, Point. would you mind reading the land acknowledgement now? I'm so sorry in my, uh, I'm sorry to everyone in my, I would have preferred to have read this at the beginning of our meeting and um, just realizing that I made that mistake. So that's okay. Yeah. Um, the town of Portola Valley acknowledges the colonial history of this land we dwell upon, the unceded territory of the Ramatush, Ohlone, Kamiya Nation, and Wekma. Ohlone, who endured a human and cultural genocide that included removal from their lands and their sacred relationship to the land. Portola Valley recognizes that we profit from the commodification of land seized from indigenous people and now bear the ecological consequences. We seek to understand the impact of these legacies on all beings and to find ways to make repair. Thank you. Um, so that's our town's land acknowledgement, which the town council approved in October. And when it began to appear on agendas, there was um, some concern and resistance. There's been some commentary at town council meeting um, about concern and some you know, phone calls and emails going around. And um, I first heard about it, a committee chair called me um, and they expressed, and what I initially heard was that the concern was really one of process and procedure, that committees didn't like that the town was telling them what to put on their agenda. Um, and I think part of that also was formatting. I think the, the formatting has changed a little bit if you look at it on our agenda, but initially there wasn't um, a header or a line and it sort of looked right bumped up against the bottom of an agenda. Um, and then and then also as the discussion went on for some weeks, there emerged concern around the, the content and the language of the land acknowledgement and um, some people feeling uncomfortable with it. So I've had a, a fair number of conversations with different people around this. Um, not as many conversations with as many people as I would like um, in order to best understand this situation, but I've been thinking about it a lot. And I think at least one other committee member has had some um, discussion in the committee or in the community with individuals about it. Um, so basically, 
it's been brought up to the council, I'd say, is why we're discussing it now. Um, because the, the, you know, the council is super busy right now, is my perception of things, um, but also ambitious in the, uh, what they're ready to take on in conversation right now, you, you know, aside from housing element and lots of other important things. Um, so folks have brought up uh, concern to council members. So um, basically the item in a way is returning to the council. And I have been talking to different council members uh, also about this situation and just wanting to keep the race and equity committee really involved in a leadership position in, um, in the conversation and in guiding the conversation in the, in the community. So that's why we're talking about now. I've reached out to all the committee chairs um, for to invite them to to talk and share their um, their perspective or the perspective of their count of their committee members, and also to invite them to this meeting to share any perspective. Um, and I've had some some communication there. I made the silly mistake to invite people to talk to me last Sunday, just totally unaware of it being the Super Bowl. And I got a lot of uh, sorry, I can't. It's the Super Bowl. <laughs> um, yeah. So, so yeah, I guess some questions are, you know, just how do we, as basically people have felt like, um, I think they've felt scared of it in different ways. They've uh, felt like uh, it doesn't represent their perspective and they don't want it. Um, yeah, some of the things I've heard, they, they, uh, don't want to see it on their agenda, and they they don't like that they weren't consulted um, before it appeared on their agenda. I've also heard positive feedback from people that they appreciate our work um, in bringing this forth in the town and um, and moving it along. So it hasn't been all one way or another, but obviously the the, cons the concerned vocal voices um, are more vocal and uh, probably more attention grabbing or active in this moment. So yeah, some questions are just uh, wanting to open this up to discussion. And, and like I said, I've been really thinking about this and talking about this a lot. So if other folks have you know, questions, if I haven't really explained the situation clearly, um, but some questions for the committee are just, how do we as a committee guide um, this process for our community about around conflict around this land acknowledgement in a way that um, is simultaneously you know inclusive um, that that creates progress and moves the needle forward because I think that's what we're trying to do as a committee in the ways that we can to um, create create progress um, regarding race and equity in this town. Um, but then how, how do we do that potentially in, you know, how important is it to do it in a way that's not, not divisive? Um, yeah, just how, how do we wanna engage with this process wise or anything? So those are some questions, those are some context and I will open the discussion up to committee members now for, um, questions or comments? And I see Adnan's hand up. Yeah, so um, the two or three other things that are on the agenda, right? That people don't have control over, right? Are uh, that this is a hybrid meeting and that there's assistance for people with disabilities. Uh, if people disagree with that, will those go away? Um, are those things that, um, oh, I don't agree to this specific portion of this line that's on this thing. Uh, is this something that's going to be going away? I mean, if, and again, those are not things that the council has decided upon, right? These are things that are there for other reasons, I would imagine, and that are coming from, uh, again, this is creating structure, right? Um, the council has approved it, has approved it being on the uh, agendas, uh, did not approve the saying of the land and land acknowledgement at every single meeting, right? Or the opening of the meetings, 
right? So there was a compromise that happened or there was a decision that made in that regard. Uh, so I wanna point that out too. And, um, and, and yes, there's going to be disagreement with uh, a lot of things, but, um, and, 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 and to your point in terms of commenting and having conversation about it, if they want to offer a revision, if they don't agree with everything on there, we'd be happy to look at it. I'd be happy to look at it. I'll speak for myself, right? Um, and, and see if, if we can think about it in different ways. But uh, I do think that uh, saying something and not having action around it is putting the burden of uh, the onus on us rather than on the people that are having these issues. If you're having an issue about this, go and do your research, go and figure out, go to your internal research, go to your external research and give us an option. Take action into the thing that you think that this should be replaced with or, uh, or why. And I I'd love to see something uh, productive come out of that. Um, I think one important point of, thank you, Adnan. Yeah, and I'd love to hear from, from everybody. Thank you for starting it out, Adnan. Um, one important, you know, I think everybody knows this, but there are three new council members out of five. So in a way, it's effectively a new council um, from the one that uh, approved the land acknowledgement in October. Um, and I hope it's okay for me to say that I think this new council is, is more conservative than the previous council. But our council liaison is shaking her head. <laughs> well, I think it's, a, it's an interesting assumption. And I don't, I wouldn't put this policy as conservative. I mean, well, no, I'm not, I'm not, the, yeah, I'm not talking about trying to be fair and we're, and we're trying to be inclusive. Yeah, yeah, thank and you. I, 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 agree I really that, don't think polarizing, particularly in that fashion is helpful. I, I don't, I don't think there's uh, good or bad about conservative or progressive. I think they're both valuable qualities. Um, and I agree that the land acknowledgement that's up right now is uh, a totally valuable conversation to, to have. And, and maybe I shouldn't have, have said that, um, but I mean, that's, that's, that's my, my, my personal opinion. And I, and I think that I could, uh, you know, back it up with just some, some descriptions of uh, policy. And, and again, I don't, I don't think, uh, I, I think that conservative, there's a lot of value in conservatism and the, the pendulum swings. Um, but I think that's part of why it's coming up. Um, other committee members. And if ever, anybody, if any committee members wanna tell me that I'm uh, a dummy for calling the new council more conservative, I welcome that. Well, I'd be happy to comment. Um, I think there's always a problem when you ask people to agree with a statement, um, particularly if they didn't write it themselves. If we at the beginning of every meeting had some sort of non-denominational prayer, or if we did the Pledge of Allegiance, there'd be some people who did it but didn't feel great about it. Yeah, probably me on both of those actually. So um, it's not. So I think we should be careful in how much we make people say that they didn't write, and that's why you're getting pushback. I also think that particular acknowledgments. Um, both a little long, a little buzzwordy, and a little bit under-inclusive. I mean, you could say, we acknowledge land was stolen under the Treaty of Guadalupe Hidalgo, but that we'd be acknowledging that we stole it from the people who stole it from the Indians. So what are you gonna do? Um, so um, um, I think it's appropriate for this committee to talk about it, because that's part of our charge. I think it's appropriate for the city council to talk about it, because well, whatever they are, whatever do that's their job if it were me i would just read it once a year and maybe stick it on the city not stick it put it on the city uh, website maybe in this room somewhere because this is a historic room um but um so that's my take on it i also think it distracts us from actually getting work done hmm. yeah i'm remembering uh thank you yeah um, yeah. any other, oh, Judith Murphy. 
Um, I just want to say a couple of things. Several people approached me um, in January about this. And uh, the main thing I heard was this, um, we don't want this on our agenda, um, that we didn't approve it, so it shouldn't be on our agenda. Whereas my reading of it was it was more on their letterhead rather than because they, you know, none of the individual committees were being asked to do anything about it. Uh, it was, it was, the concern was presented as a process problem. You know, how did this suddenly appear on our agendas when we weren't asked? And then the interesting idea about, well, we, I think we went through the proper process. There really isn't a, much of a precedent for committees taking what they're working on to other committees and make, getting them to approve it unless they're sort of joint uh, ventures, if you will. Uh, but then I, I think clearly it was, it's not just process. The, to the extent it's process, it's not our process, it's the council's process and they need to handle this and fix it, not us. Um, but to some extent it's content because the, the sort of uh, intensity of the reaction I think was partly to the content. The content was seen as political. And someone said to me, they thought, well, it, invite, it opens up their committee and invites um, requests for reparations and that kind of thing and that we were opening them up to legal. So it kind of spun out into that kind of a thing that I, uh, surprised me. Uh, but I guess my main thing is there were, any, there were a number of people quite concerned about this and quite worked up about it. And none of them are here this evening. I had hoped that the people who were concerned would come so that we could have uh, some sort of a dialogue about it. Um, if not to fix it, because it's not ours to fix really, but to, to talk about it. And the fact that um, they're not here is of concern to me. And that's really all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Judith. Um, yeah, there has been a uh, recurring commentary about it being political. And Adnan, I agree with you, there's other things on the agenda. And I think the distinction that some folks are making is that this feels more political. Um, I do think it's an interesting question. You know, things start out political and then become normalized. Um, like, I think there's things on the agenda about accessibility, and that was probably really political at some point. Um, yeah, just, you know, the reason I'm bringing it up, and Andrew, I realize, um, like, I hear what you're saying about, you know, it distracts us from doing other work, and, and I hear that, and I, and I agree with you. And I also think, like, it is work in and of itself and is meaningful and um, gets people thinking and does make a difference. So, um, and then I hear, I hear that it's the councils, you know, sort of the councils to take care of, but um, I think it's important that the race and equity committee stays really involved in that. I, I would prefer that we stay involved in that so that we have an influence on the council. And I wanna clarify that while I do think this council is um, more conservative, just objectively, I think this council is also working really hard to be inclusive and to listen to people. And I appreciate that. Wondering if other, other committee members, Kim or Kirsten? I just think it raises difficult, interesting questions. Um, and I, I'm not sure I see, feel any compulsion at this point to really take it further. I mean, I think it's been left, uh, left by the council that it will be on the website and on the letterhead. And I think that's an advantage in advance. Um, it's opened up some interesting discussions. Um, you know, about which I don't have any clear conclusions. Um, Kim or, or Cole have any comments? I mean, I, I kind of agree with what, what you said. I, I don't really have a, I, I, I agree with what you said. I think, I mean, as someone that's been here for a while, I do, uh, 
been here for like a while. I do. I, I mean, I kind of think that this committee has definitely like changed a lot. And I would say it's probably gone more conservative, but it's hard to, I don't want to like, I don't want to like, I don't know, put like a label on somebody, but yeah, I, I think that that man, you mainly like summed up uh, what I was thinking. So I don't think I have anything to add. Okay. Kim, anything? No. Okay. Um, I, I would be interested actually in hearing what our council layout thing has to say about it. Yeah, I would too. Um, can I just as a point of context, I think the, you know, why I think it's important for our committee to talk about and why I want us to stay involved in the, um, the conversation is I think the, this council is, uh, you know, really trying to be very responsive. Um, and so I, I think the council would feel motivated to change something about this situation to potentially to respond to people. Um, so that's why I want us to, to stay involved because yes, the council in October decided that um, it would be on the agendas and approved it. But the, I, the council now is both a new council and also it, the land acknowledgement showed up on the agendas when this new council has, so they've been hearing the feedback from the community. Yeah. Um, okay, I'll, I'll, I'll do my best. Um, I, I would say I haven't formulated an opinion that I want to, you know, that I, I'm bringing to you as a, the full summation of my opinion. Uh, I'm, uh, as I've said, I love the land acknowledgement as a way of starting meetings. I think it's very important, particularly in this meeting, to have a land acknowledgement that's set at the beginning of the meeting. It sets a tone of inclusion. It uh, sets a policy. Um, it, I do not think, I, well, I won't go as far as a not in this case. I, I feel that the land acknowledgement we have could be maybe a little bit more, have a, 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 maybe a, a little bit more refined, a little bit less cliched, a little bit more um, positive, uh, proactive, although I like the last line. Um, and uh, so I think that would be the work of this com committee. And if what you've heard back from other people is this doesn't sit well, and we'd like to know more about this, um, I don't think it's their duty to come to your meeting to tell you that, although they've obviously spent a lot of time talking to everybody. The main functionality that happened is that uh, one committee has not met since the land acknowledgement was put on their agenda. One of our most important committees in, has in met objection in objection to the land acknowledgement. Um, and the reason is that they feel that they should have been asked before it showed, and they should have had, and when they asked for the opportunity to talk about it as a committee, it was denied to them. Uh, and so they have, in resistance to that treatment, felt that they didn't want to include it until at least they could have a meeting that didn't have it on it, that they could discuss it on. Now, I don't, there's, this was not my opinion, and it's not, it just shows you the level of, of concern, and, um, and obviously for many uh, Americans, this is a, a great point of shame and guilt, and shame and guilt is what hurts people the most uh, and makes them dysfunctional in so many ways. Um, so we, we don't want to perpetrate that. We want to solve that problem and get people working on the problems. Um, and um, I, I think that taking it back, I mean, I've been working on this with other things. How, how do you get a policy that all the committees agree with? Uh, and when does it something that you're imposing on them? And when is it something that you think is, has to be standard? Well, if it's legal, if it's something you have to do, or if it's a policy that the, uh, in this case, that the town council agreed to and wanted to uh, put on, I know that the council had no idea how it was going to look on the agenda. So they have the opportunity at this point to say, make the type smaller, cut it down to two, two lines, all that kind of thing. They could do all those kind of things to make it look like it really was a hitter or a footer and not just part of the agenda. Um, so 
just in summation, what do I think? Uh, I think you did a great job putting it together. And I, I think you did it. Uh, and now you're discovering what it means to put, put it out there. Uh, and so I would celebrate your victory and see if we can keep the, keep the damage under control enough so that we get a, 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 a more of a community buy-in. That would be my take on it. So you identified the process point, which um, is like in a certain way, water under the bridge. And now what do we do about it? You also identified the content point. And I, I think what I heard from you is that you would uh, personally prefer to see different words, right? I would like to see, as I've told you, I, I'd like to see a little bit more indigenous buy-in. I'd like to see it having been put by at least one of the indigenous groups and they're resistant and you, it's the experience for you to know how resistant, how, what that's gonna feel like and what that conversation lo looks like real time, uh, which is that they're not gonna wanna talk for you. You know, they're not gonna wanna put this on there. They, they're, gonna, they're gonna teach you a whole lot about communicating with unincluded minorities. Uh, and it's not gonna feel comfortable. Uh, but it's what this committee is supposed to be doing. Got it. So process point also indigenous buy-in. Um, and I will note that I have begun um, those conversations. I haven't um, had the chance to, you know, really have a sustained conversation, but um, begin those conversations and look forward to um, going deeper in them. Okay. I think we have one member of Thank you, Council Member is Huffey. It, is, am I overlooking anything? Help me, because uh, this is my new role. Okay, it's, uh, I need all the help I can get to it's, uh, communicate correctly it's, for you. It's hard to cover everything. Um, okay, I think there was one member of the public, and um, do I need to un unmute you, Catherine McGill? Are you still there? And can you unmute? She's you? she had to leave. Oh she's goodness, not, she's not still here. Okay. <laughs> Goodness. So right. can I say one more thing? Um, yes. And that is that, Lucy, to the degree that you're having conversations with uh, people in the indigenous community, it'd be really mm -hmm. nice if most of those conversations could happen with all of us in the, in the, in the group so that the larger group has, uh, has an opportunity to have conversations with them and hear from them and learn from them, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to just getting reports back if they're if they're open to that I think it would be good for all of us mm -hmm. yeah thank you Judy Kim the practice of land acknowledgement is not to put the burden on indigenous people about getting approval for the for a land acknowledgement there's plenty of material there out there you can google it um, to find out about the practices but um, this is not for indigenous people to approve. In fact, that would be putting a burden on them that isn't about their work, it's about our work. Good point. Thank you, Kim. I thought Mary had just said that that was an important- I'm taking it back. Piece of it, okay. <laughs> no, I agree, with, I agree with Kim too. I was just responding to what Mary had said about the, that they might have strong feelings about it. I did a land acknowledgement uh, and ran it by uh, the president of the Avamutsan tribe. And uh, he, re he in fact refused to, uh, I said, how does this feel? What does this look like? He said uh, he couldn't comment on it. So I know what you mean. I just think that engaging and maybe even just experiencing that upfront like you have obviously uh, is something that people need to, re to realize. That it's part of the process. But these people are here. Yeah, um, also part of the context for my reaching out to local indigenous leaders is that um, every year uh, the winery that I work for gives a portion of our holiday sales to different organizations. And a couple of years ago, it was the local tribes. And right off the bat, they said, oh, that's great, but we're really interested in relationship. 
Um, so, so that's part of the context. Um, and, um, but I, I agree with Kim. It's not like to put it on them um, to approve it. It's, uh, it's our arts to read. And Kim, I'm, maybe I'm digging into the details, but I'm not sure that's necessarily even so much of a experience thing, just something that, well, it's all experience, but um, yeah, thanks for bringing that knowing. Andrew, is there anything you wanted to share? I already talked about this. Okay. I am a little puzzled why we want to acknowledge something if the people we're acknowledging don't want us to acknowledge it. But I mean, what can you say? Well, it's historic. It's not that they don't want us to acknowledge it. It's that they don't need um, every town and every organization that's doing this to be asking them, you know, taking their time and asking them, what do you think of this statement? There's there's so much material out there already. Um, it's just about not putting the bird in there and understanding like where the where the work is to be done. I mean, one of the things I'm aware of, um, I did I was part of a group in my church that we went through this process and we studied all of these things together. And that did not happen on this committee. So um, there, I, I can hear that in the comments that we didn't, we didn't go through an education process together. Part of the work of this committee is to have um, difficult conversations, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, part of the work of this committee, as far as I understand it, is to um, help other folks realize and acknowledge that there are other opinions and other views and um, and to bring to light some of these issues. Uh, so the conversations that are going on, I think is a success. Mm -hmm. If people are riled up, this is a success. What the town council approved in October to have happen made this conversation, just like, you know, Andy, who's out there with his sign, Right? Mm -hmm. Most of the people wait, but he's get the, he'll get the finger once in a while. That's what's happening here. <laughs> Many people are waving, but we're also getting the finger, right? Mm -hmm. And this is part of the process. Mm -hmm. They're acknowledging it, they're reading it, and they're having feelings. This is good. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Adnan. And actually, I think the council really appreciates you doing this work. Yeah, great. Thank you. I know the council has a lot of work right now. So I think if we can have some of those conversations and do some of that work, that's good. And also just creating conversations. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree with what Adnan said that part of our, our committee, you know, what, what looks like success is having difficult conversations. And I think also success looks like um, helping our community to have difficult conversations. So if that's happening to some degree in this, I, I also agree that that's a success and, and may um, this not be the only uh, realm this calendar year where we help this community to engage in difficult conversations, um, which relates to just one point I wanted to mention about um, the relationship of, of the indigenous people that the land acknowledgement is a, acknowledging is, um, I, I agree with what Kim said, and Kim, thank you for sh um, sharing that perspective that it's like, we're not wanting to make more work and ask more of, um, of these indigenous groups uh, in this, like it's, it's our work we're trying to do. Um, but I think, you know, to the point of relationship, I think it's also like, how are, how are we engaging in that relationship besides this land acknowledgement? Um, and I think maybe that's something that's tricky about land acknowledgements if an organization puts out a land acknowledgement and that's sort of, that's it. So I think this committee is, is interested in, um, you know, continuing with, with that relationship. And, and I think um, Kim and I have in the town seal project have been talking to some extent about um, those possibilities, but just I think it raises the question of, you know, if we are supporting this 
land acknowledgement presence in our town, you know, what else, how else are we engaging and being in that relationship? Okay, anything else? I'd also just mention as well, like um, there is conversation that is going on at the town council. I would love for those people, again, like you said, and it has been said, and maybe the town council can promote this is for those folks to show up to this meeting and present their conversation and their concerns here so we can start having that dialogue or potentially to create a separate gathering where um, folks can talk about what their what their feelings are around this right so so that we can hear from them directly rather than um, through other folks that are um, in this meeting yes like yeah, can I comment one, mm -hmm. one, one last thing? To me, it, this has already gone to the town council. The town council wants to change the policy. They don't need us to do it. If they want us to look at it, they should tell us that. And then we, at least we'd have a charge instead of just sort of talking about it. Well, they do want us to look at it. Okay. I'm sorry if I wasn't more clear about that. When, when I've been speaking with various town council members um, and suggesting that our committee- They passed something? No, they didn't pass something. There was just a, yes, it would be great if you all could try and, you know, cause it's a tricky situation for them. And, and there was uh, definitely an indication from multiple council members, like, yes, it would be great if your committee could, um, listen about this and work on this to well, so if, there, if there's an action item the action is to, obviously we can't do it in the night but the action item is listen to what all the other committees and complainers have said try to absorb it figure out what you're going to do and come back to us with a recommendation that's something we can do but i think we need to hear from the objectors more directly if we're going to do that but i i don't you know i haven't heard I guess I think I have enough things to do without worrying about other committees. <laughs> yeah, so. um, totally. I, I, it feels awkward because I've been having so many of these conversations with um, people, but obviously I can't like transmit that uh, super well to everyone. And, and committee chairs were, were invited to this meeting, I think uh, just like Super Bowl Sunday, Valentine's Day made it a tough sell and happy Valentine's Day to everybody. Yeah. Um, great. Yeah, we got election day, Valentine's Day. <laughs> we're on a roll. Um, it also may feel threatening to people. Uh, yeah, could be. I mean, I think that my invitation was pretty friendly, but, um, email can be confusing so yeah um cole cole has lucy his hand up. yeah cole has his hand up yeah i see that cole um i definitely like really agree with what adnan said i think that like it's super important to like have it's have have like dialogue um with them because if i feel like if they don't like agree with it and and i'm not really sure that like i, I don't really think it's fair for them to say that like they're intimidated to like come to this meeting because like I feel like if they're gonna like be like opposed to it, they kind of have to like at least be willing to like talk about why they're opposed to it. So yeah, I guess that's my like two cents. Okay. Um well I really appreciate all this discussion. Um and yeah, thank you. And I think it would be interesting as Andrew pointed out succinctly if the town council wanted to give us some specific direction that we could um you know help in because or or if people have ideas because right now as as a chair and judy you had a good idea to just bring um for example the indigenous voice to the conversation more but i've been having a lot of conversations but um if it's going to be something our committee works on um anyways I think I think the conversation I I think the conversation is valuable right now. I think and, I, I dare I suggest that mm -hmm. you recommend that it be removed from the, every agenda um, for the time being until people get a chance to include it in their in their discussions at the meetings. Hmm. You certainly I I 
I didn't hear. I didn't hear what Mary said. Mary, say well, that again I, into your I was, microphone. I was daring to suggest something um, uh, that uh, if this committee, as a an offering of peace, would consider uh, asking the the town to remove it for one round of meetings, so that people, the committees, could get a chance to discuss. What their that what their additions, subtractions, uh, desires were around having this on their agenda. Uh, you might get more discussion, more inclusiveness, and a better buy-in. You may not get any buy-in by some people who really feel like their commitment to the town is to do bike paths, uh, not to do this particular. Thing. Uh, work, but you at least will get a, a more robust discussion among in the on the communities. I mean, on the but then it then the discussion is so fragmented. It's like then it, you know they're having that discussion at meeting A, and then they're having a different, totally different discussion at meeting B, and it's all going on in these little whirlpools, and you're not making any progress on it. And also, you say you know as a peace measure, I don't think. I don't think there's anything that we did that was wrong that requires us to be making making amends. If there were process concerns, it was it would be about how you know the you know should the council have reached out to the committees before they before they put it on there. And I think the assumption that because it's printed at the bottom of the agenda means it's something they have to do on their agenda is totally a, a misunderstanding. That's it's not. It's not on their action agenda. Um, and I, I don't quite get why it should be an action item for bicycle and safety to be talking about it. I, I, it, it just gets, it gets confusing to me at that point. I think we should, I, I would love for us all to have a meeting about it. If people are concerned or, or supportive that, you know, we should have you know, we should come together, the, all the people on the various committees, and talk about it and chew on it and come to some um, at least agreement to disagree, if nothing else. But to have it happening, you know, over in that corner and then a totally different conversation happening over in that corner without any, it, it just, uh, the fragment, I don't see the fragmentation going anywhere except some people would get more and more pissed off in their meeting and some people will get less and less pissed off in their meeting. And, you know, yeah. thank you, Judy. I, I, I feel like this is my, my obligation as chair. Um, you prefaced your question with may I dare to ask. And that made me think, well, can the council liaison play that role and ask that? And I just looked up in the committee handbook. I don't think so. The role of the council liaison, and I, and I think that's actually in this committee, not a um, uh, a question or suggestion that the council liaison is supposed to make. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for that's being a, open you. to feedback. <laughs> it's good thank for you all for this, answering uh, my question. Which yeah, is, uh, I don't. I shouldn't do that. Yeah, um, but I will open it. I mean, Judy, you spoke to it, and Cole, I see your hand, and I would welcome anybody else. And obviously, this agenda item has been going on a long time, so let's try and keep it succinct, says me. Um, but if anybody wants to just, you know, would people feel good about just removing it right now? Our committee say remove it. Cole, did you have your hand up no. or no? No. Kim? Council made Sorry, I, forgot to, I forgot to, like, lower my hand from last time. Okay, got it. Kim? No, the council made a decision. If they're going to change that decision, they can change the decision. Yeah, the council has to make that decision. That's a, that's a council thing. I mean, yeah, yeah. And if they do make that decision, it would be important for them to talk to us, uh, I, I feel like, at, at the very least, before that decision is made. Yeah. So if that's going to be on the agenda, uh, that the council is posting, then we should be able to be present for that conversation. Anybody else? Um, just process wise, I don't have a problem with a council liaison giving us some hints on what might or might not be a good idea, but I think it's for us to decide whether we think they're good ideas. Legit, yeah. <laughs> I I, 
I keep thinking that we're moving into the next item <laughs> on the agenda. Which okay, is thanks, Kirsten. Possibility of a special meeting. Yeah. Um, okay, I just want to offer one point on the idea of removing it. Um, I could see how our count, our committee could make that recommendation if we wanted to. Um, I, I'm not personally in support of that, and I think part of that is. Um, you know, there was a process point that got people upset. And I think if it was just taken off now, that would just be a reactionary. I mean, that would be a process point just in the other direction that would feel pretty reactive and, and get a whole new group upset. Um, so I think discussion's great, um, but yeah, but not uh, so what reactive action. Is that anything that we do to change this would have to be agendized at the council level. Yes, I mean, I, I, I think definitely anything to change this would need to be agendized at the council um, level and our committee is requesting that the council would consult us um, and, and try and involve us in that conversation first and um, yep. I think we can do, I think we have to, it has to be on with the Brown Act, but it would have to be in a public meeting. Sure, up to two council members could. Well, yeah, no, I, th I think it would be fine with, with the Brown Act. Anyways, um, as Kirsten said, seems like we're moving on to the next agenda item. Uh, cool, thanks everyone for waiting through that one for now and we'll see how it turns out. Okay, uh, uh, explore the- Public comment, are there, is there any uh, public yes. comment? Is there any public comment? Unfortunately, Catherine McGill is a chair of a committee and it seems like she's the only one who um, attended. And I did see her nodding her head at the mention of um, process, feeling like it showed up on the agenda. I think I saw her nodding her head, but any public to, comment? I to be clear, conservation was not one of the committees that, that uh, had a negative reaction to this. Yeah, some committee chair said, thank you for doing this. I haven't heard anything from committee, any committee members about being upset about it. Yeah, is there, are there any members of the public who want to comment? Okay, thank you, uh, sincerely thank you for discussing this together. Um, okay, C is explore the possibility of a special meeting before next regular meeting. And I just, I put this on here because, um, you know, we're kind of slow in getting started this year uh, with our meeting canceled and not being able to schedule an, uh, another one. Um, and I think that's fine, but I just wanted to gauge people's appetite since we sort of missed a meeting, whether anyone has the appetite to sort of uh, dig into this organizational work more in um, a special meeting before our next meeting on March 14th to make more progress. And I, I think I have a feeling about what the answer is, but if anybody wants to chime in, I welcome it. Well, it seems to me the reason I brought it up when I did is that there's been discussion about having a special meeting with people who are concerned about the land acknowledgement. Special meeting just means not a regularly scheduled meeting. Right. Yeah, like not second Tuesday. Right, and yeah. whether that would be, well, I think it would be, and I'm not sure how this fits in with the Brown Act, but but the reason I would see the need for a special meeting is to call a meeting and specifically at a time that's convenient <laughs> and specifically invite people who have concerns who would like to discuss the land acknowledgement in as informal a, a process as is possible consistent with the Brown Act. Yeah. I believe they were invited to this meeting, right? I did invite all committee chairs and to share it with your committees. So we can continue doing that. Yeah. Um, I, yes, I, 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 I agree with that impulse, Kirsten, and I had that impulse. I think, you know, at this point, our, our March 14th meeting could be just as good of a place to do that. And yes, they were invited to this meeting. So, you know, kind of indicates appetite. Andrew, did you? If somebody wants to tell us what they want us to do, they don't have to come to the meeting. They could send us an email or a letter mm -hmm. or, or a resolution or whatever they want to do. In some ways, that's more effective because it's more official looking than somebody showing up here. I also think 
um, back when I used to chair committees, I was used to take public comment first mm. because that way the deliberative process is informed by the public comment. You don't make people wait around and see you talk. That seems like a good idea. I thought the ad hoc committee we always took comment last. Which struck me as odd. Yeah, that's my understanding of the order, but um, it seems good. But I think I think the proper it would be like presentation of the issue, questions mm -hmm. by the members, mm -hmm. public comment, then discussion by the group. Is that right. at least, good? and then you know maybe would have had a chance for Catherine. people to talk. But yes. I'm not running this committee. But just right. my I am, I guess, running this committee, and I welcome your input. <laughs> um, yeah, that makes sense. Questions, public, and then discussion. Mm -hmm. um, so that way, we're you know, we're not committing to a position. They're saying anything right, before right. we hear from the public. Before we hear that other information. Yes. I like that. Thank you, Andrew. Um, so so can yes. I say that um, I am not interested in having another meeting that would be just about organization or structure or deciding what we want to do. I think we should be able to do that in our own meeting. The, uh, I would consider a special meeting if it was really a convening to discuss this hot issue. Because mm -hmm. I think that's a hot issue, uh, but yeah. that's the that's the only meeting I'd be interested in working um, schedule, and I'm not sure it can be done on real short notice. So as far as I know, the committees now are all meeting. That even trails, which you know didn't meet in January because of this, I just saw their agenda, and they have a they have a meeting schedule and an agenda, and the acknowledgement is at the bottom of it. So. I don't know whether it's now more of a non-issue or whether it's still percolating out there. <laughs> I wonder if there would be value in creating a subcommittee to work on this land acknowledgement issue so that I, would anybody be interested in that? And basically um, then the subcommittee could interface with the community more rather than just me. Are, are we, just are we moving idea. on to, are we moving on to review subcommittees or? Oh. <laughs> um should we should we yeah. yeah let's let's do that thank you adnan um okay so i'm getting the pulse there's not like a lot of enthusiasm to have a special meeting just to look just to advance our work in terms of like organization and and annual priorities yeah i, yeah. I would just sounds good I might not be able to make the next meeting because it's the middle of my vacation depending on the internet connection. okay thank you um Okay, discuss meeting structure and frequency just in our November meeting. We had touched upon the idea of meeting every two months and just wanted to get a pulse from people. Does one month still seem good or two months? Anyone have any strong? It has seemed like a long time to me since our last meeting. It's been three months, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I, I kind of think every other, every month makes sense to me. Okay, yeah, I'm in favor of every month, but. I am too, especially as we're starting to create some turmoil. Okay, <laughs> excellent. Um, discuss any. Uh, I just mm -hmm. add, um, I, Adnan had a suggestion when I was chair that we open with um, inclusion. Um, this is also a place I was putting on the agenda like um, just so I, it was to remind me, land yeah, acknowledgement, totally. you know, at the top. So I think also it would behoove us to put some times on these discussion as this last discussion has taken up most of our meeting. You mean on the agenda? I on the agenda. Um, and so that we can make a decision. Do we want to continue discussing this? Or are we just going to let it be and move on to the next thing? We really haven't been mm -hmm. in that situation until this right now, mm -hmm. but I think um, it's a good practice. Yeah. It doesn't have to be for every item, but maybe for things that we know that um, there are bigger discussions that we can put limits. Sounds good. Um, discuss creation of committee contact lists. Um, Kirsten had, be in had was interested in um, a contact list, would everyone be fine with that? And do people want to exchange phone numbers or just emails are good? I assume it's not public. Not public, just an internal 
committee? The, the town has, as far as I know, for a long time has made a roster for each committee and has submitted and has circulated that roster to the other members of the committee. That's been sort of an automatic thing. Huh. I, I, have I haven't seen, seen that. I haven't really. Me neither. And I always BCC. Um, so I'll just send out everyone's emails if that sounds fine, because usually the chair BCCs. And could you clarify the Brown Act in terms of communicating outside of meeting yeah. time? Um, we're not supposed to, and anybody else chime in, please. We're not supposed to discuss um, anything outside of meeting, basically. Any agenda items or a quorum. A right. Quorum came Pardon me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if two people want to talk, they can talk. That's why you can have committees. Yeah. But if four people or five people want to talk, you can't. And then you're not, sure not supposed, supposed to daisy to, chain it. I'm not sure we're supposed to be texting people during meetings either. We're not supposed to be texting people. Because <laughs> uh, of that settlement agreement of that. Yeah. But yeah. I'm rolling really, really my eyes, but whatever. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for the quorum clarification. That's an essential point. Yeah. My 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 understanding from what uh, Melissa said is that we can, as committee members, contact the chair. Yes. But just not copy everyone. Yes. Or discuss. Um. Okay, so I'll just send everyone's emails out in a, okay. in a roster. Um, re review subcommittees. Um, this is sort of getting, this is getting into obviously how we organize ourselves. Um, I included, um, or it, at the end of this agenda packet is um, my best recollection of where our subcommittees were at previously. Um, so I just wanted people to look at it and um, tell me if it seemed accurate. And then I think we actually want to sort of revisit what our, our priorities are and if people still want to, to be on these subcommittees. Um, but if people have the agenda packet open, if they could go to the, um, the subcommittee roster. There was a uh, mention in the uh, minutes for the November meeting that uh, I apparently agreed to be, form a subcommittee to discuss endorsing various educational opportunities that we know are happening or that we learn are happening in the area. Mm -hmm. uh, and I totally dropped the ball on that. I'm sorry, I became a subcommittee of one to publicize the event that is is coming up on Saturday. Um, and actually I have flyers for the committee members if they would like it. And it has been sent out on PV forum and the Ladera listserv as well as the Sequoia uh, listserv. But, um, okay, but so it did occur to me in thinking about this that it might be good to have a written policy about um, endorsing educational opportunities and what the process is. And for instance, I have no idea about what the process is to get it onto the, onto the town's Facebook page, for instance. Yes, that would be something to learn about. Um, okay, so I think a way to go about this would be, um, do folks feel prepared enough that we could go around and sort of share what we're most interested in working on for this year? Like, I know I didn't posit that as a question before this meeting, so you haven't had time to necessarily prepare that. It could just be more of a intuitive thing and we can change the subcommittees, um, you know, next month. I kind of feel like that's a big discussion at, at 8.05. <laughs> I agree, I'm just um, thinking what to do with our last um, half hour. I wonder if any people, okay, so we're going to later. Well, no, that's a, that's a good question, I think. I thought we were trying to keep it to an hour and a half. Um, yeah. Anyway, I, I wonder if there are maybe, you know, things that people want to check in about that shouldn't wait another month. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great, great point. And I think you're right. I think we were trying to keep it to 90 minutes. We, I think we said 90 minutes preferable, 120 minutes if totally necessary. So maybe this isn't totally necessary. And you're right, it's a, a big task right for the end. 
Um, so I think maybe it posit it instead um, for for folks to think about for this year, 2023, like what, I mean, I think for these committees, a lot of the work happens in subcommittees, like the actual work that can happen happens in subcommittees. Um, so that's, it's pretty important what our subcommittees are and who wants to be a part of them. Um, so thank you, Kim, for chiming in there. And, um, and I guess I would just ask for the next meeting then that we all, you know, spend the time thinking about um, what, what is the work that we wanna do in a subcommittee or individually in this, in this committee? Like, what are we most excited about for the year 2023? What do we think is the most important way that, these that this committee can be effective? And then since that is a larger conversation, we'll save it for our March 14th meeting. And Kim, I also want to really apologize because I suggested making a land acknowledgement subcommittee and obviously we've already had one. So I, I apologize for that. Um, but then also to Kim's suggestion, is there anything about this subcommittee roster or process that people want to present right now that feels better not to wait for a month, whether that's suggestions, ideas, strong Just preferences? Point of clarification, I'm on the housing committee and uh, the communications committee is actually called the um, awareness and engagement subcommittee. Great, thank you. And I think I am not on the housing committee. Yes, great. Okay. So I would I would posit it as um, yes. people coming to the next meeting with what they really would like to work on in the year themselves individual mm -hmm. rather than trying to shoehorn ourselves into these subcommittees that we created last year. Some of mm -hmm. which have done some work, some of which have done a lot of work, some of which sort of you know may have run their course. That we it's like you know what's your you know what's each member's hope and desire for the year in terms of the work they want to do. Uh, and then we, we, we go forward from that. Yeah. I think um, the, the budgeting process um, on, on the town seal committee, um, I've identified a panel, a speaker for a panel um, around town seal exploring problematic historical symbols and reviewing those symbols periodically. And we would need to pay this person. And so budget would need to be, is that, is that on the agenda? It is an agenda item, but are you sort of suggesting it as a subcommittee? Or? No, okay. uh, I'm, yeah. I, I, I realize my action item, mm -hmm. what I wanna move forward mm -hmm. as part of the subcommittee work requires budget approval. Yes. Um, identifying a speaker. We had talked about doing that, right? An educational series. And um, so I've identified a speaker, um, but we need to, we need budget approval in order to pay this person a stipend. Yes. So as part of um, the process of, as Judy suggested, individuals just coming um, with what they're personally really would be excited about working on as a committee member in the year. Um, another point of information would be if you think that the work that you want to do has budgetary needs, because that budget cycle is coming up, I believe. I haven't actually participated in it ever. Judy, I think you haven't. It's in, it's in April, correct? Well, yeah, there's a fiscal year. So the money, the money that we have in our budget now, we have some money until that's been earmarked for us that's in the pot until the end of June. And oh. Right now, we need to be thinking about what we want to get in the but in the budget proposal so that it'll be approved in April. I think I think it's first in April and finalized in May, and then um, so that we have money next year. So Kim, you should be able to look back and see what we got approved last year, and that money's there right now. Okay. Got it. Thank you. 
So do we need to take action as a committee to approve the expenditure of some of that money for a speaker for the uh, for a town seal? Um, I think we could we can put that on next month's March agenda and that agenda. will be will that be timing that works? Sure. When we have the details, then we approve. Yeah. Um, and the only other thing I would say is that it, I wasn't on the subcommittee, so uh, I, I feel a little funny about saying it, but we're here we are, it's Black History Month, we just passed Martin Luther King Day, you know, one of the major things this committee had said it was going to do was to be, you know, education and awareness, and all, all of this is kind of going by without our having much presence at all, which, which I... I think is too bad, and, and I feel badly for saying that because I'm not a person who volunteered to do it, and I'm not currently volunteering to do it. But if we're going to um, hold our head up high as a race and equity committee, seems to me that's at a minimum we could be doing that. Yeah, I'll just comment on that. Um, I would say that committee subcommittee is not really functioning. Are we talking about communication? Yep. Yeah. Uh, or the name that Adnan mentioned. Mm -hmm. um, the scope of what to include and not to include has become a big issue. And another issue is, do people on this committee want to administer um, publicizing you know, events that are happening out there? So they're just, this is the reason it hasn't moved forward. And I would suggest that that shouldn't be our role as a committee. I think the fact that it hasn't moved forward and, and of these discussions around the scope and everything, and there hasn't been somebody stepping up to do this administrative role is an indicator that maybe that shouldn't be the function of this committee. Thank you. Um, yeah, I like what Judy, I think Judy said that, you know, these committee, these subcommittees are just a reference point and we don't have to, we don't have to move forward in these subcommittees or maybe somebody else is feeling energy to engage with something. So I think just uh, next meeting on March 14th, um, if, if people could take the next four weeks to reflect on what you, how you would want to engage, um, including in the form of a subcommittee, what you would feel comment. excited about. Yes, please. Briefly on two things. One, um, I think there's a subcommittee that I'm the only member on about policies. And I do want to bring that forward this year. I do think we should recommend to the city town council an adoption of some sort of uh, broad um, racial equity, anti-discrimination policy statement in the in the town ordinances, and I uh, have some drafts that we can start from. Uh, I have two other thoughts. One is um, since some of us are here all about. Uh, in the wake of George Floyd, we know the sheriff has contacts with people of color in this town every day because there's people of color coming into this town every day. And there's even a few who live here. Um, and we have a contract with the sheriff. And I think it would be interesting to see what's going on, what the policies are. And we have a new sheriff um, to look at what our town's role is in how those contacts go. Because if somebody did get sat on here in our town or beaten up or ignored or whatever it would be under a contract we have with the sheriff and we haven't talked about that too much um and then the other thing i'm interested in is um to some extent what's going on in the schools with bullying tolerance those sorts of issues because these are real life issues to me they're more important than what's on the seal or what our acknowledgement is I'm happy to be on any committee that deals with us. Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Okay. Any other burning desire commentary around subcommittees? Okay. Um, so G, discuss committee priorities and strategy for 2023. That'll be uh, March 14th. Um, 
tabling that agenda item H discuss race and equity committee budget and budget process for upcoming cycle again um, tabling that but that as we said is related to subcommittees um, just in the sense that if there's work that you're feeling like you're going to be passionate about doing in this um, in this year to think about what budgetary needs might be because um, that budget request cycle is coming up and then um, I is discuss inclusionary housing fund implementation and process. And um, I don't think we have the time to discuss the implementation and process, but this is just to say that, um, you know, the town still doesn't have a policy for implementing. Our, yeah, yeah, our, our committee made a recommendation, but the, the the town doesn't have a policy yet. And um, I think that that's uh, an issue of, of concern to this committee. Um, and I don't think we should discuss it now, but I would wonder if we as a committee, um, I, think, I think the council and the community recognizes the priority of creating that policy now and that it's been really slow coming um, but I wonder, as a committee, if we just want to make an official encouragement that, you know, getting that policy going sooner than, um, you know, that that, that that is a priority for, that we regard that as a priority for our, our community and our council. But would anyone be supportive of that? I, I'd be curious to hear um, uh, what conversations have had and have been had in the council. Uh, perhaps mm -hmm. Council Member Hufti could talk a little bit about that around the uh, recommendation that or the proposal that we have put out there and if that has been looked into and what the status is of that. I don't know. I'm not familiar with the proposal. What's the proposal? The Inclusionary Housing Fund. The policy oh, for the Well, I am. Fund. I am. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, we appointed a subcommittee to uh, establish a policy for the inclusionary housing fund and i'm hoping to work with your committee and uh and at least find out what your what you did put forward because so far i haven't even gotten that and the other thing that we're doing is we're looking uh which is uh, not your fault i'm sure it's my fault uh, but there's lots of things i haven't been informed about uh the uh we're looking at to see also already in the general plan, there's a, a fair amount of that money has already been allocated. So just by policy in the general plan. So there's a, a that just brings up another subject that uh, I'm very interested in, in, which is the general plan and what is in there, uh, particularly around inclusionary housing and also spending policies. Uh, and I think a deep dive at figuring out what's in there and what, if anything needs to be changed is the starting point uh, because it turns out if you just write in inclusionary housing in your search and in the general plan there are about 12 items that uh, are already speaking to that so there's work to be done and and that's what that subcommittee which is me and judith uh are are tasked to do so it seems to me that we have done, we have done what the council asked us to do, which was we put together um, a list of priorities and we presented it to them and they accepted our, I mean, they said, thank you for it. And now there's a subcommittee and that subcommittee, uh, that council subcommittee as they work should start with, with what we produced as one of their uh, fundamental documents, if you will, they don't have to accept it. It's just our recommendations, but it's, it's where it's one of the documents they should start with as they work forward. And I would hope, uh, Mary, that you and Judith would call on a couple of us to, you know, meet with us if you want or speak with us. So, you know, we had a subcommittee that did that, spent a lot, fair amount of time talking about the language, et cetera. Um, so I think at this point, our committee's job is to be available to you to help you incorporate that as you form your policy and for the committee to keep its eye on the progress. And I think they're, say, they did form the subcommittee. So I think it's a little bit of an overreach for us to say, 
hurry up, you guys. <laughs> yeah, we just yeah, did it last point. week. Uh, and I, I'm looking forward to getting this document. Uh, yeah. Council yeah, Member Hufti, it's, 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 it, it, it's, in the, it's in our minutes. I'm not sure where it is in your minutes, but it's in our minutes of 10-11-2022. Well, I'm sure that's true, but I wasn't. On <laughs> no, 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 but I, if you want to see it, if you want to see it, you could find it over there. I'm not, yeah, on the, on the, on the town on website. The website. I'm sure we could, I'm sure we could send a copy as well um, can, to I, you directly. I'm almost, almost good enough <clears throat> to get this. Well, great. That sounds good. I appreciate Judith's uh, reframe. I was sort of trying to posit it as yeah. like a, an encouraging nudge that this committee really right. thinks this is something worth prioritizing. Um, but Judith, I like your reframe to, that we're available as a resource, um, the subcommittee especially, for yeah. this subcommittee that has been recently formed. Right, so I'm excited about it, really excited about it actually. Um, and, and of course you guys are on the top of the list as, as is your other committee, the finance committee. So we, uh, I'm expecting to be talking to uh, to you all, I asked if we could have a, a complete uh, a meeting with you guys uh, separately or with the, when you're meeting with Jeremy or whatever, and that apparently didn't work. But yeah, we tried to get that done today actually earlier and it wasn't allowed to do it. Okay, but well thanks. I'm hoping that the, pro and the, the, the Italian I wanted to make about the two processes, the one of the land acknowledgement and this one both is that I was hoping to have a nice clear process with this one uh, so that we, re having the council be ready to talk, have a, a subcommittee ready to talk and then talk to each of the committees and then ha actually have a policy that everybody has, we're sort of happy with rather than having everybody say it. We weren't consulted. So I was gonna take it to all the committees. Make sure everybody was happy. Great. Um, okay, well, I think it's time to adjourn. I I had it in my mind, we had two hour meetings and I really apologize. And thank you for the reminder that we were trying to really do 90 minute meetings and the next meeting will be a 90 minute meeting. Um, so just- Can I just make a final announcement? Absolutely. My, my personal commitment for, mm -hmm. <laughs> for Black, uh, for uh, Black History Month mm. is to organize this. And so I do have, I do have poster flyers. Uh, if any of you are able to come on Saturday, that would be great. Thank you, Kirsten. Um, okay, great. Well, I just wanna say thank, thanks to everybody. I know that the land acknowledgement conversation really dominated this um, meeting. I think it's important and it's valuable to bring up in our committee, but I, I realize it's at the, the cost of some of that organizing work. So I hope um, over, the, over the next month, we'll all be able to um, do that reflection and uh, really hit the ground running on March 14th with that conversation. Um, and of course we can meet in our existing subcommittees now to, to make that progress. Um, yeah, and I just, Thanks to everybody on the committee. I think everybody's making um, different valuable contributions and um, yeah. So if we have a motion for adjournment. So moved. Seconded. Seconded. Um, I don't think we need to do a roll call for, for adjournment. Yeah. Okay, thanks everybody. Thank you. Are you happy with the chicken? Yeah. yeah. That's a great program. Yeah. Thanks everyone for your good input. I was a little rusty getting my chair legs going. So appreciate the, the bumpers. You did a good job. Thanks. I did okay, but some some things I remembered <laughs> the next meeting. Yeah, 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 yeah
Oh, oh, I changed my name. Uh, oh, you are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, that's, yeah. That, that, was, that was too good to me. Yeah. yeah. my daughter was and I, I couldn't uh, ask them. I was in the house. Right. So I was yeah. Yeah. Sure. Thank you for your correction. Was like, well, I, I, uh, yeah, thank you, Kim. Roger Craig. Needed that correction. <laughs> Yeah, me too. Thanks for yeah. Yeah. Yes, we, did we talk? You're the one with the sign on the corner. Okay. Bye. Yeah, so a little family history in this one. Dad was in that time. That's the time that I reached him. He worked out a I don't think we have enough sheriffs here that there's point over how many people. Yeah, no, but, yeah, no, I'm not aware. I, I just happened to know. Yeah. 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 You know, if something happened. Yeah. I also worry about some of these uh, in your forms. I saw a suspicious person uh, on my street up yeah. in my little cul-de-sac, and by that they mean somebody forty or whatever. And yeah. That's a little scary. No, I'm still aware of it because yeah. I'm not. Yeah. And you know, I can get my right. standard rules. Yeah, that's it's funny. Some of the trails are on my street. I learned that from Shelly Briner when I first moved here. Shelly was like, I want to show you how to trust that. And the other thing is that I'm. And the mother of the grandmother was the grandmother of 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 the other hand, every day, Kids are harassed in school oh, yeah. for who they are. And that's like which terminology yeah. Yeah. yeah, and I'm not sure what well, but, but it, it's 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 yeah. 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 I agree with you. We're not we don't have jurisdiction in schools, but if something's we do have jurisdiction to raise awareness. Yeah. Thanks, Kirsten. So, Kirsten, the thank you, Andrew. Appreciate you. Um, so, the process for the minutes. Oh, I'm gonna turn this. Um, process for 